of this video on effective writing in accounting classes, we're going to use a case from our intermediate textbook. It's from chapter one, judgment case 1-12. Remember, when you have an assignment, you want to identify the audience that you're writing to. So in this problem, right off the bat, they tell us our audience is a client, a new client, Wolf Company. Next, you want to define your task. Your task is to provide advice to the company. So you have a client who wants your advice. You must write to add value. As a CPA, you are charging for your knowledge. People are willing to pay when the communication is clear, concise, and assists them in more effectively and efficiently running their business. So the company is in the real estate business. It rents office buildings. They are coming to you because they want to record the receipt of the rent revenue when cash is received. So you begin to identify the accounting issue. We're talking about revenue. We're talking about the timing of the recognition of the revenue. We're talking about should this recognition take place when the cash flows or at some other time. The question has two requirements. It asks us to describe the criteria that must be satisfied before revenue can be recognized. So we're talking about the revenue recognition principle. And we ask for our opinion on the position that the company has taken, which is revenue should be recorded when the cash is received. And whether this is said or not, we always must support our position. You support your position through research of authoritative accounting sources. Textbooks are not authoritative. Wikipedia is not authoritative. Nor, nor are articles from professional journals. But we should not ignore these sources. Oftentimes, the most effective way to do research is to start with these non-authoritative sources. They can lead us to where we need to go and look. So I'm a smart accounting student. I see that the assigned case comes from chapter one. And the first thing I do is read chapter one. In reading chapter one, I have come across this paragraph that deals with the realization principle. And over here in the highlights, we see that the author has made a short definition of the realization principle. And it tells us that revenue should be recognized when the earnings process is virtually complete and collection is reasonably assured. So when we receive cash, obviously the second part of that criteria has been met. So once the rent revenue has been received, collection is assured, does that alone allow us to recognize the revenue? And the answer, of course, is no, because you need to have both of the criteria met. So now we have to determine what is the earnings process and when is it complete when it comes to rent revenue? A little further down in the paragraph, we see that in some activities, 
time is going to be the determination of whether the earnings process is complete. It doesn't talk about rent here. However, it would seem that that makes a lot of sense. If you have a monthly lease, the earnings process will be complete when the 30 days a month has elapsed. So now that we have a clear understanding of the issue, we can go and look for some authoritative direction. And we're going to do that through the FASB codification. This is the main page of the codification. On the left side, we'll look at our categories. And one of the categories we have is revenue. And when we go to that topic, we see we have section 605, which is revenue recognition. And we're going to look at the overall first, which talks about the criteria that we'll use to recognize revenue. Within the topic of revenue recognition in the overall, we have our status, which tells us of any changes to the code. Overview and background, which talks about some general guidance, tells you what is covered in this topic area. Here they tell us that the overall section provides guidance on revenue and gains, the installment and cost method. We see that there are further subtopics relating to products and services. Overall, we're looking to see when should the revenue first be recorded in the books and records. And that's going to be in our area called recognition. Right in the paragraph number one. We are given the two criteria that relate to revenue recognition. The first one being realized or realized talks about the collection of an asset typically cashed in return for providing goods and services. The second is being earned. This tells us first that this comes from paragraph 83B of the FASB concepts number five. And we will not recognize revenue until it is earned. That is until the goods and services have been delivered. And it's tells us that revenues are considered to have been earned when the entity has substantially completed what it must do to be entitled to the benefits represented by revenue. And that is the key to our current case. When does a landlord have been deemed to earn revenue? Well, when the tenant has occupied the premises for the amount of time that they have paid. So the code tells us that the authoritative document where revenue recognition is defined is the Statement of Financial Accounting Concepts Number 5. And this is available on the FASB website and is contained in a zip file uh, that is on the portal. So in opening concept five, 
we were to go down to paragraph 83, we would get further guidance on the recognition of revenue. B talks about when revenue is earned. And in paragraph 84, the concepts speak about the earnings process. And in 84D, we see that if products, if services are rendered or rights used, extend over a continuous period of time, for example, interest or rent, revenue may be recognized as earned as time passes. So for this particular case, this is our best source of authoritative information. So we're going to take that and we're going to begin to put together our letter to our client. So we're going to begin drafting our letter to our client. The case doesn't give a name of a person in the company. I think it's always good to have uh, an individual uh, who the correspondence is being directed to, so I've made up a name. It's textbook land, perfectly okay. So I'm going to use Mary Contreras. She is the CFO of the Wolf Company. I begin with my greeting, and in the first paragraph, I speak about the task that has been agreed to between the client and my firm. I'm telling you that I am providing authoritative basis, not just my opinion. I am going to GAP and I am securing GAP guidance and applying it to the facts of the case. The issue evolves when revenue must be recognized. The client's position is that revenue should be recorded when the cash is received. And in the course of our engagement, we have agreed that cash often is received ahead of the actual months of the occupancy of the premises. I begin by giving the specific FASB code section, and this is the proper way to cite the FASB code. The FASC stands for the FASB Accounting Standards Code. We begin with the topic number 605 for revenue, subtopic 10, section 25 for recognition, and paragraph 1. The criteria for revenue recognition is given. The earnings process is judged to be complete or virtually complete. There is reasonable certainty as to the collectability of the asset to be received. And this is a direct cut and paste pretty much from the code itself. So I've taken the writing in the code and I have shrunk it down a bit but the essence is still there. Next, I apply the facts. State the obvious. Collectability is not an issue when cash is received first. So we're going back and looking at the earnings process. I know it's still my argument that the tenants are entitled to occupy the premises through the last day that the payment is made. Therefore, the earnings process is not complete until that day passes. Until that time, since the cash has been received, 
and the earnings process is not complete, the client should increase the liability account. And as the rental period expires, you would reduce down the liability and increase the rental revenue. I conclude by providing the, ga the guidance in Statement of Accounting Concepts Number 5, Paragraph 84D, which states that for an item like rent, time provides the recognition basis. Next, I'm going to anticipate some of the questions my client may have. Have they been incorrect in doing this cash basis recognition all along? So I'm going to do more research on the cash basis. And over in Google, I've typed in cash basis versus accrual basis of accounting. And one of my favorite sources is listed second. And that's a comparison of cash and accrual methods by Wikipedia. So let's go over and take a look. Again, Wikipedia is not authoritative, but it can lead me to authoritative sources. And here we see that the we see that the cash basis of accounting is acceptable for income tax purposes. And a reference is given in Wikipedia, and they give us the IRS code section 446 as the basis for the statement that the cash basis is acceptable. So let's research that. So into the Google toolbar, I've typed IRC 446, and that brings me to the Internal Revenue Control uh, Code. And we see that section 446, which talks about the general rules for the methods of accounting, allows for the reporting for income tax purposes based on cash receipts and cash disbursement, which is the cash basis of accounting. So I want to be sure to let my client know that as far as tax reporting, what they've been doing is fine. But if they wish to report under the generally accepted accounting principles, they must use the accrual basis. So I let them know that for income tax purposes, the cash basis is acceptable. However, if they need a set of financial statements to be audited, they must be in compliance with GAAP, and GAAP only allows for the accrual method. So my conclusion is that unless they change their method to conform with generally accepted accounting principles, our firm could not provide an audit for their financial statement. So we would then conclude our letter and our assignment will be complete.